Top Story begins a five-part series on the secrets of Beverly Hills. Ralph takes a look behind the beautiful facade of that city and finds things are not necessarily the way they appear. Everybody loves Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills is a rather unique community. It's the greatest place in the world. Rich. <laughs> I can't afford it. It's to put on, I think. The brilliant people flock here. There's the best here, the best of the world. But it has had so much publicity till it's beginning to overplay itself. I think God is challenging Beverly Hills. I think Beverly Hills is sort of the American dream personified. Welcome to Beverly Hills, completely surrounded by Los Angeles and halfway to Santa Monica Beach. Area 5.69 square miles. Address California 90210, 90211, and 90212. Population, 33,000. Average spendable income, $36,132. Average temperature, 70.08 degrees, with a little smog and a little ocean breeze. Like most small towns, life centers around the old Dome City Hall, which contains a mayor and a city council, a new chief of police, and some nice new police cars, a fire chief, and some nice old fire wagons. Right next door is the post office, with a postmaster, of course. And across the street, the library, with its fairly new librarian. Down the street a bit, the handsome courthouse. And just next door, a small, old-fashioned hotel. As in most villages, the newspaper is a weekly, and the radio station is up on the hill. And you're with us this Monday evening at KJOY, FM 99, KJOI, blooming with beautiful music. Just an ordinary town, but not quite. Beverly Hills is a woman's town. Of that 33,000 population, there are two women for every man. It's a wonderful place to find a wife, a terrible place to find a husband. Although, obviously, some manage. Bother you that there are two women for every man? Not at all. It's fun. I love competition. It's almost a matriarchal society. For instance, Donna Alman, the vice mayor, will soon be mayor for the second time. That's a first for any woman in any town. It's expressing appreciation to Ellen Stern Harris. And the city council's main check and balance is columnist and consumer advocate Ellen Stern Harris, who doesn't agree with much they do. Well, I think that growth, like um, anything, there can be an excess. We call it cancer when growth cells go wild. And I think that Beverly Hills might be in danger of that kind of cancerous growth. In that courthouse, Deputy District Attorney Lynn Cameron strikes a different blow for Beverly Hills Live. In fact, my very first case that I had in Beverly Hills, I was the DA. It was a female judge, a female clerk, female bailiff, and, the, and a male prostitute defendant. And that quaint hotel? It's our only five-star hostelry and the only one to be managed by a woman, Alexis Herundis. I believe it's the service that we extend to our guest. But not everything is managed by women. The police chief is Lee Tracy, and you can imagine the jokes he suffers about being the house dick. But his department has a unique history and a most unusual relationship with his town. It's a uh, very enviable, uh, mutual type love affair, uh, if I can use that term. Uh, there's a lot of respect and admiration that works both ways, the policeman towards the community and the community towards the policeman. It's still the safest uh, city in the country, I think. The crime that is existent everywhere in the city now makes me more fearful about taking walks here. The fire chief Bill Daly told me Beverly Hills is so lush and green that arson fire at the Sheik's house was three quarters of their fire loss for the whole year. But the average age in Beverly Hills is 55. Good place to have a heart attack. The paramedics will be there in three minutes. As honorary mayor, Will Rogers did more than inspect the police. In 1930, he wrote a sharp but funny letter to Washington complaining about postal service. The result was the handsome, spacious post office that is still adequate today. But today's customers are also famous and demanding and have that same kind of clout. In Culver City, my customers might write a congressman and here they pick up the phone and say, Dear Alan or Dear Henry or Jimmy or even Ron. <laughs> and, when, and when that happens, my phone rings five minutes later and 
We uh, take care of things. We don't get our mail. The post office, which always has a line. I don't think there are words I could use to describe the Postal Service generally accepting incompetence. Actually, Beverly Hills folks get twice as much mail as you and I. They're great targets for junk mail. They subscribe to everything. Then there are all those dividend checks. There's a lot of interest here, of course, in personal finance, as you would imagine, particularly stocks and bonds and investment opportunities. Do you carry scruples and values? Of course, and in multiple copies. Do people read them? Sure, they read everything here. That's one of the things that makes it so interesting. Librarian Michael Cart told me that all those sexy novels set in Beverly Hills are popular, but no one takes them seriously. The question is, how much is fact and how much is fiction? That only happens in books. These people sit down and they conjure up all these stories, you know. It's real and it's phony both at the same time. There's a lot of pretension. Some of it is, too. Beverly Hills lends itself to sensationalism. We've gotten a lot of unfortunate publicity, I think, and, you know, it makes good press. The uh, stereotype is not factual at all. I just think it's the media that makes it look like something else. These women who write the books, they never did anything before in their lives. All of a sudden, they come out with a big sex book, and they make it. What do they know about Beverly? Now, it's odd he would mention Beverly. See the little sign on the depot? That was the town depot, and the town used to be called Beverly. It was only the part up north of Santa Monica that was called Beverly Hills, because it was in the hills. And that was Gene Raymond, I guess, you naturally saw that. In any case, that's our first episode of A Little Town with only two oil wells that just can't quite handle success. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful world. Thank you, Connie. Tomorrow some more, huh? Tomorrow we'll find out that not everybody's happy with success.